You're listening to Social, Social Distancing. Distancing, a podcast produced by Olivet College to remind you that no matter how far we are from each other, we're all a part of the, the Olivet, Olivet College family. family. All right, welcome back to Social Distancing to our Olivet College community. We're excited to talk to you once again. We have a great guest lined up for you today, but we'll hold off on that for a little bit, let you live in some suspense. My name is Ryan Shockey, and I'm co-hosted today by Dane Pavlowski. Dane, how are you doing? Great, Ryan. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's another beautiful day out here in Michigan. I hope it's beautiful when they're listening to the podcast. A uh, lot of good stuff going on out in the world. I'm, I'm excited. It's a good day. But first and foremost, we always talk about the good news and what we're seeing out there and uh, trying to come up with news articles and stories. But I've got good news today in the Shockey family. We went fishing this weekend. Oh, wow. And someone caught their first fish ever. My oldest daughter, Isabel Shockey, we went fishing. She caught her first fish. She actually thought she got the hook stuck on a rock along the bank. And so I go over there and I give a little tug and this little fish starts swimming around, caught her first fish. And then we did the old secret where everybody took a picture with the fish in case we all got skunked. Oh, absolutely. I had a picture. So it looks like we all caught something. But, you know, the good news with that, Dane, is uh, just getting to sit back and think about all the extra time we get to spend with our families during this time. Uh, To be able to go fishing on a Sunday in May as an athletic director is pretty, pretty unique. So we got to do that this weekend. We've had a lot of fun. Of course, uh, like you mentioned earlier, Dane, beautiful weekend. Get to get outside. Uh, Accidentally worked myself into chopping some wood. Dane, what do you got going on on your, your good news? I know I you know, I felt kind of the same way this weekend and that my wife and I are both very we're very outdoorsy we we like hiking we like going on walks I'm really into photography which isn't surprising with my what I teach but so it's a weird spiritual connection I have my grandpa was a photographer and like take nature pictures so I always like to go on walks and take pictures um so when the weather is nice our, both of our spirits are way up so Saturday we like got the smoker out and like Friday we smoked some pork shoulder and Saturday we smoked some chicken. We were just all over the place cooking things. Uh, but we, we were outside. My wife did a lot of awesome yard work when I was doing some school stuff uh, in during the day, but then we went on a really long walk. And usually like, I think I was telling you before the show shock you like when it's in semester or even in the summer, like when we're busy, my wife gets to enjoy her first summer of being a faculty member, which is exciting for her. She usually works all summer. It's super busy before. Uh, but we came back from our long walk. And normally, like when we get home from like on a work night or whatever, in person, normal time, we like get home, cook dinner quick, throw whatever we have together for dinner, go upstairs and like watch something on Netflix or some TV or live show and then go to bed. And we're just spent. And now, like, on Saturday, it was incredible weather. Took a really long walk. Came home, and we were kind of putzing around. And then we just kind of, hey, you want to go upstairs and watch something? We're just like, yeah. So instead, we opened all the windows on the cigar porch. Didn't even smoke a cigar for a while. And we played, <laughs> we played cribbage for, like, two, three hours probably. Had some music going, some Bob Seger. Had the tunes kicking. And we just kind of just real enjoyable nights. We had a nice little chat with our friends on Zoom from Grand Rapids, had a nice little talk, and just had a cigar to end the night, obviously, but uh, but it was just nice, kind of like you said, like, it's just simple, like, it just felt like we kind of, everything else was paired away, we just kind of took it back to the essentials, just hung out, talked, had a good time, so it was really nice, and for me, it's that, like, simple thing, like, we don't need all the technology and all that, it obviously helps for things like this, but that it's kind of making me realize and appreciate, like, I got up early today for no real reason, like I went out to check if I could ride my bike, but it was like 35 and I'm no shocky. So I'm not about to ride my bike when it's cold out. Literally stepped out the door, didn't even go to the garage show. But I was like, nope, too cold, came in. Uh, but I just kind of sat on the couch, just kind of read some stuff. And it, just, it was just nice. Everything's kind of simple. And like you said, the weather really makes a difference. So I hope uh, everything keeps going the right direction. We can enjoy that, even though now it's going to be cold. For a High school seniors, decision time has arrived. The OC admissions team is here to support you in the coming weeks as you make your college decision. Here are five factors that set Olivet College apart from others. Number one, small class sizes with individualized attention. Number two, affordability. Number three, in-demand majors and programs. Number four, robust student life opportunities. And finally, the Olivet College Advantage. 
Contact the admissions team at 800-456-7189 or admissions at allthatcollege.edu to learn more and take your next step. We got a, we got a guest today that um, I would love to work with even more, and I'm excited to talk to him, focus, no distractions for me or for him for a while besides Shockey. But I remember the first time I met our guest today and I shook his hand and I was like, whoo, I could feel the energy. Like it was just a bolt of lightning went through and I got super excited. And we have some similar things in our background together. It'll go green. Uh, but Tyler, go white, baby. There it is. Let's go. Uh, so we got a great guest today, the coordinator of student success initiatives. He's advised all kinds of student organizations in his past positions, and he's a huge supporter of not only all that college students, but student athletes as well. Probably the most fired up member of the Olivet Comets basketball student section for men or women this year. He's awesome. A huge addition to the Olivet College campus, helping out student engagement. Super excited to talk to him today. Our guest is Joshua Gillespie. Welcome, Joshua, to the show. Hey, 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 hey. What's happening, Shocky? What's happening, Dane? So glad to be here. So much energy. Just always. I, I love having him at the uh, basketball games because if the officials ever say anything to me, about the student section, I can go, yeah, see the guy over there in the hoodie, the, the red hoodie? He's on staff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just let him do what he wants. He's with to us. Do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and it worked. That yeah. Upton Gymnasium was a tough place to come play. It didn't matter who you were this year for both teams. Yeah. Uh, but so welcome. Thank you, Joshua, for agreeing. We were super excited. You were on the short list of people we wanted to get on right away. Thank you. Yeah. So glad to be here. My pleasure. I'm excited, I'm excited to learn more about you. But, uh, you know, one of the – things that we really like to do, Joshua, is we, uh, we bring in our guests. Um, first and foremost, we want to know how you're doing. Um, how are you and your family doing with the, the adjustment to the new normal? You have three kids at home, yeah. lovely wife. How are things going? Your age on your kids are different than mine, so I imagine your life has a little more, a little more hectic. I don't know. I'm just guessing. How, how's it going and how's your family adjusting? Listen, you know, it's, it's, it's been quite interesting. I believe at first, Shaki, I would say it was, it was quite hectic, somewhat confusing, didn't know exactly what to do. But when the, I think the normalcy, if you can believe that term during this time, came when the, when the school system sent out some structure as related to class. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, Things really begin to firm up for us, but and we have instituted a few things that I think have helped us. Like like every night we meet at 9 p.m. Every night, 9 p.m. we meet. The, the the children have to share two uh, biblical scriptures. They have to uh, share two world views or two historical black facts, one vocabulary word, and then after that uh, we pray, and then we call someone that. Uh, we haven't talked to in quite some time just to say I love you. So so just kind of creating that schedule, having a whiteboard with all the information on it as it relates to the day, just being more organized has helped create some normalcy. And that's been great. So I'm I'm happy to report that things are going quite well in the Gillespie home. I'm grateful. I really am. That's awesome. And it's great to see everybody come together and begin to kind of get along. I think you're right. The first couple days was a little hectic, right? We were all trying to figure that out. But, you know, now I think our kids are kind of just starting to leave each other alone and figure out their own things and work on their own work. But Dane, you had your hand up. I was going to say, I wish I would have heard about how great the situation was over there because I wouldn't, that sounds like something I need to be involved in. Can you take in hey, another child? Hey, Dane, listen. Now, Shockey said two days. I didn't say two days. Uh, for me, it was a few weeks, though. I mean, we, we, we got it together. I'm not, my kids were playing PlayStation all day. I had to figure out something. Have you learned anything new about people in your family with taking that kind of time to sit down and share facts or vocab worlds, words or worldviews? Listen, listen. Uh, what have I learned that my 16-year-old my is not always interested in being in that space. However, however, she... Typically, she complains and just wants things, but she's she's been more engaged than I would have anticipated her to be, considering that she'd prefer to be on TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat, but she's engaged, and she's even said, Dad, can we switch up some things that we do? Let's have some games. Let's do, although we do movie nights every other Friday and pizza, uh, 
you know, she's she's asking to incorporate some different things. So, uh, what have I learned? Uh, she can be more engaging. Uh, the boys, in terms of being there, can be focused. And then uh, for my daughter, I would say probably even more sentimental and affectionate than what she uh, typically is. Uh, so. I, I think at those nine o'clock meetings, that's what I've learned. They're learning compassion. They're learning to think beyond themselves and to understand that there are people who, who are not as fortunate as they are and that it's always great to reach out and to express love and appreciation for those who you're connected with. So I think you mentioned a couple of things, Joshua, but what are some of the things that, because I think a lot of people out there listening, like Shaki said, have families and they're trying to figure out how to work with this new situation. So what were some of the biggest hurdles or biggest difficulties and how, what are you guys kind of doing to overcome those? Sure. To be honest, just not having a schedule impacted us negatively, just mm -hmm. not because the kids were simply doing everything that they shouldn't have been doing ig TikTok, playstation anime all not a, not all day and so it was important for us to create some type of organization to help combat some of that i didn't want to take it all away from them but combat it to some degree so so we have a whiteboard so we use the whiteboard to communicate the instructions for the entire day so you, you need to get these things done before you get on any kind of game and so that that really helped because the schedule was laid out for them so academics Khan academy chores go outside if the weather is nice i mean get some fresh air play basketball take a walk ride the bike do something just get out the house for a little bit and I believe just creating a structure of some kind uh, helped us and then getting their input. So what would you like to do uh, since we're going to be coming together anyway and when we're not coming together, what are some other things that we can do as a family since we're here? For, for us, uh, that made a load of difference. And, and Dan, I'm not saying this is the end all be all. So, I mean, but this is just created some some normalcy for us. So in your new schedule, all of your organization, have you picked up any new hobbies or are you getting to do something that you normally wouldn't get to do? Maybe picked up an old hobby again? I am starting to take more photographs outdoors. My, uh, my son, Jeremiah, he is a, a, a hawk advocate. So we go out and try to find, he names the hawks, t t t you know, informs me, of the hawk and i try to get pictures of hawks so we drive out a little bit and try to find find hawks so i so i've been doing a little bit of that not a whole lot but just started doing that listen zoom zoom has become my new friend now i could have done this last year the year before but because of the time that we have i'm spending more time with friends and family across the world than I ever would have, you know, and so, and so I want to call, I don't always call, but now I'm, I'm having these group Zoom meetings or conversations with friends, and so that is something that I'm doing more of. In terms of other hobbies, I should be breeding some cichlids right now, but, I, but I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm adverse to setting up this 300 gallon tank in my basement, afraid that it's going to crack in my some of my friends have had their tanks crack for whatever reason. So, so I'm not, I'm not picked that back up, but. Well, slow, um, the, slow down. You flew over a really important detail about Joshua Gillespie. What was like, that? Like it's just really common knowledge. What, what are cichlids and, and oh. you breed them, right? <laughs> I mean, so I have not done so in some time, uh, Shaki, but yes, African. So, so my favorite freshwater fish African cichlids, just simply the, the most beautiful freshwater fish in the world. Um, uh, whether they're from the Malawi River or or South America, uh, I yeah, I mean those are that's a hobby that I enjoy engaging in. I just haven't done it and don't know if I'm going to pick it back up. I was actually, I don't know if you know this, but I have two fish tanks in my office. I do know that, and and I. I had just set two of them up and I have some other, fr I have some community fish in the 90 gallon tank and I was just getting ready to start breeding cichlids, but then uh, the COVID happened. So anyway, so that's a hobby that I haven't done. 
uh, that maybe, you know, I'll pick back up once we get back to campus. Well, I guess I should take a step back. Growing up, I had, I had any, any pet that you could think of. And so <laughs> as a kid, there was a big field behind our house. And so I would go to that field. I would, I would collect insects, <laughs> uh, study them, mate them, fight them. My favorite insect, by the way, is the praying mantis. I'm a man of faith, so, you know, that makes sense. But, yeah, so I would go to these fields, gather insects. Uh, I would buy the Audubon on insects and study them. So I could, I could probably name almost any – when I lived in Illinois, I could name any insect, basically any insect in Illinois – tell you about their class, their phylum, anything you want to know about them, I can tell you about them. And so I just grew up with pets. And so what stuck with me were the fish because I couldn't have them in the residence halls. Once I moved out of the residence hall, then I was able to, you know, get a few additional ones, which have basically been snakes. And so I have a, I currently have a corn snake now named Cornelius. And uh, I plan to get a Burmese, a yellow Burmese, uh, probably in the near, in the near future. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, so my whole pet thing, yeah, that, that's most of my life, man. Every day for the next few weeks, Olivet College is going to give a shout out to a member of the class of 2024 on social media. Be sure to follow Olivet College on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to see these fun updates, get info on events, and more. We're talking about some of those hobbies, but a thing we uh, that always comes up, I think, because Shaki and I like to watch a lot of things. What are you, are you guys watching anything, any binge watching, anything on TV or any streaming service that you've had a chance to really view and Listen, enjoy? Man, I hate to admit it. Man, Netflix is hurting me. So look, 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 all American money heist, all things Kirk Franklin. I mean, that's a gospel artist. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm binging gospel concerts, but man, yeah, Netflix, man, that money heist, I just finished money heist and, uh, that was excellent. So yeah, those have been some of the ones that I've been watching. Try not to watch, try not to watch too much. Oh yeah. We just started, like we started at whenever Noah Bailey was on a couple yeah. weeks ago and he told us, Hey, this show's good. My wife and I started it and we just started the fourth season last night. That show's incredible. It just, whoo. Hey, listen, I, hey, listen, I really hate to admit this, but I love animals, man. I even watched Tiger King, man. Gosh. <laughs> hey, that was good. Hey, listen, I, I mean, I, it, it, it was indeed entertaining. All right. So you are a very high energy person. There is no way to deny that. Okay. I just, I can't imagine you just kind of like at home all the time, <laughs> just right. waiting, right? What are you going to do when they start to lift the ban and you get to slowly, responsibly go out? Um, what, what's that one thing you really miss? That you're just itching to get back. To well, you know, I work at a food pantry or I volunteer at a food pantry. And so I, I, I do that uh, at church. You can only have so many people, but I'm one of those people that, that, that that's, that's still there. I mean, I still social distance. I have my mask and my gloves on, but you know, so I've been out, but to answer your question specifically, when it lifts, when it reopens, I am going real estate shopping. And so I'm, of course I'm online all the time anyway, but I'm going, I'm going back into the houses uh, to look at them, to check them out. In case you didn't know, Dane, uh, my my other life, I'm a real estate investor, so I I look for homes to uh, to flip, to buy, to hold. It just depends. And so, yes, uh, uh, Shocky, that will be one of the things that that I'm going to definitely do once things reopen. And and I'm going back to Toastmaster meetings. I'm part of Toastmasters as well. Nice. So look, for, so look forward to attending some of those meetings. So we what we like to do on here, uh, as we said before, is we can be positive and some good news. So is there any good news that you've seen maybe in your community with your family? Just something good that you want to share that's going on? Man, well, well, listen, the, the whole notion of serving at the food pantry and being able to provide nice i mean i mean great food boxes for people and looking at folks who are making masks for other people that has been that has been quite tremendous my wife's a nurse she's an rn and so there have been neighbors who know uh you know we're in a neighborhood uh we have a neighbor, uh, neighborhood facebook and uh individuals are making masks for each other 
Exactly. When uh, someone may put in the Facebook, I'm looking for blah, blah, blah. Someone is always willing to give it or provide it. And so just this whole concept of, of, of helping, of loving on people, of serving, that's what's been, that's what's been tremendous. And, and it's just great to see people helping people. I love what I love what Dr. King said. I mean, he said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree uh, to serve. You only have to have a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. And I'm seeing that quote come just to fruition day in and day out i mean that is great news that people are truly incorporating this notion of i'm my brother's keeper i'm my sister's keeper because this pandemic has affected everyone regardless of your political affiliation uh, your race class or gender i mean it's affected everybody so it's it's been great to see many people not everybody but many people come together uh, to serve each other that's my good news man your department the student engagement is one yes of the essential departments on campus mm -hmm. right so what do you love about that and why do you love to come to work at Olivet College? Listen, I'm a, I am fortunate to work in a space where people truly care. I bet if we did a poll across America, every, well, we know this. Everyone does not enjoy coming to work, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's just a fact. Of, that's just a fact. But to be able to come to work and be around people who are passionate, who care about the success of, of students, oh my goodness, that, that makes coming to work real, real easy. And so I have, I, have, I have great colleagues. I feel connected. I feel welcomed. I feel supported. And knowing that my small role can impact or influence a life in a great way, uh, gives me reason to come to work, gives me reason to want to be at my best, gives me reason to want to be on the cutting edge or at least being aware of what's happening across the country so that uh, I and we can provide that same service to those who we serve. I'm there because of them. If they're not there, I'm not there. Oh, no pun intended. But anyway, uh, it's, just, it's just the reality. Uh, uh, of, of wanting to make a difference in the lives of those who want to be served. Everyone doesn't need help, but for those who need help, uh, I'm willing to be there, want to be there, enjoy being there. And because of the people that I work with, it just makes it, it makes it fun. It makes it enjoyable. I've only been at Olivet for six months, you know, but thus far, uh, my experience has been positive. And I'm, and I'm, meeting, I'm meeting more and more people been invited to the table. I mean, Shockey was even so kind enough to invite me to be part of the uh, 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 athletics and and that extension, uh, that open arm, that 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 makes a difference. I mean, it, it makes a difference. It makes the web of family greater, and so I'm appreciative. And so, it's, so although I enjoy all my co um, my colleagues in that engagement center, I'm appreciating and getting to know other people outside of that area, and it's been a blast. Looking, I mean, I'm looking so forward to this upcoming year to get even more engaged. Connect with the admissions team during a virtual one-on-one -on -one session via Zoom. High school seniors and parents can meet with their admissions rep to cover individual questions for a personalized visit experience. Learn more and register now by emailing admissions at olivetcollege.edu. So Joshua, yes, sir. I, the pandemic has obviously impacted how a lot of people do work and how we do our jobs and still have an impact, especially in a community like all of that college, our community that extends out past the town. So how has your day to day on your job changed during this pandemic? And are there things that you like about it? And what do you kind of miss about being normal on campus every day? So like, what's kind of changing about the day to day for you? Man, listen, I'm spending 
it seemed as if I'm having more meetings on Zoom than I did when I was on campus. I mean, and so, and so one aspect of that as it relates to reaching out to students, I mean, my office is right there. I, mean, I can walk to the case, I can walk to the conservatory, I can walk to the library, I can just walk on campus and you can connect with students that way. So it's, it's, it's trying to find creative ways to make that connection. And so that's really what has changed the most for me, not having easy access uh, to a face and try and so what can i do to engage in different ways so that i can still have that same interaction or i can still reach out to that student who at the time needed assistance so that's really been what's different for me a dane is just the day-to-day interactions and just having to recreate how those interactions can happen and if they even can happen because everyone everyone doesn't have access to internet yeah. and, and so just even i mean so just learning about i mean it's just things that we take for granted who doesn't have internet yeah. I, I mean we we assume everyone has internet i mean we assume everyone has technology i mean and so i'm finding out that's not the case okay well text them well guess what Everyone doesn't have a working phone. And so, so anyway, so, so to, to, I mean, so my new normal is just really just trying to find ways to reach out to those who, who were stopping by my office, uh, trying to be, trying to continuously be engaged uh, by reading, you know, by looking at videos, by attending uh, Zoom meetings mm-hmm. or, or attending webinars that perhaps I, I wouldn't have attended because now I have to, I have to learn some different skill sets. I mean, how do we how do we engage virtually now? And so, how can we be creative in that process? So, those are some things that uh, I'm changing. Uh, and and in terms of missing the old way, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, I, I don't mind change, but it's always great to see uh, a face, uh, or to be in close proximity with a face, and and because there are things that you can see with body language and expression that you perhaps can't see online, you know? And so you are able to engage a little bit more about how a student may be feeling because of what you see opposed to what they're saying. You know, all of that's a unique place. So for people who might not understand, uh, what would you tell students who are thinking about all of that? Maybe they haven't really been here, don't get it or haven't experienced it. But if you heard somebody out in the wild and they said, all of that college, what's that? What would you tell them about all of that? Listen, listen, I, 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 got, I got you. So, so in general, I would say if you want an atmosphere that truly cares about your success, then come. However, you have to come prepared to be engaged and prepared to ask for help. Because when people know what you need, I can guarantee you, I, I'm going to say this, every person at Olivet would be willing, Mm -hmm. every staff, every faculty, um, every full-time, regardless of of their status, their degrees, where they work, would be willing to help you if they knew what you needed. So I'm saying it's a family atmosphere. I'm saying that you can, that you will be welcomed. That's what I'm saying generally. So, so, so it's a place uh, uh, that cares and it's a small it's a small place and so uh, you may feel um, more more engaged or you may feel that family atmosphere that I spoke of in a greater sense because of it because it's small uh, you can definitely have an opportunity to be a leader now with that said I would also say this to some different students let me just talk to some 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 students of color let me specify let me talk to some black students i'm gonna talk to the a black male and say this i got your back it's a place that will be supportive whatever you need we can find it for you take you there make it happen matter of fact shocky and i this is crazy day shocky and i about three about uh, three months ago was having this very same conversation thinking about ways to help them be successful my first gen students how can we help you with the transition we want to make sure that you have what you need to be successful so so i'll, I'll end with this based on who i'm talking to Dane, my message may change but at the end of the day, I'm going to say it's welcoming, it's safe, it's helpful, it's family oriented. And if you want to succeed, there are people there that will help you do just that. 
So we'll leave you with an easy question. Oh, thank you. Close it out. (laughs) All right. You've got our listeners at your fingertips, our Olivet College community, our students, our faculty, our staff. What encouraging words or special words would you like to share with them? Here's an opportunity that we have, Dane and Shockey, to be our better selves. So we're spending time with family, and hopefully it's a family that we love because you all know, you know, let me just, let me flip this. Let me flip this for a minute. I'll get to your question, but I want to acknowledge something. For those of us who are experiencing some sort of normalcy in our homes, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And so we have to recognize the good that's happening in our lives because for everyone during this time, it is difficult. If we are the few or the many, depending on how you look at it, that are not hurting, what can we do to share the love that we have? What can we do to share the extra money that we have? What can we do to be our better selves? So, so my response is we can be more loving even in our own homes. We can be more giving to our neighbors, more giving to people that need it. We can be support systems for those perhaps who, who we uh, uh, may not otherwise support. We can forgive and we can allow ourselves to be forgiven. What can we do? We can take a step back, reflect on our own life and use this time to be better, better spouses, better neighbors, better dog sitters. I don't know, (laughs) better. We can just be better. It's a great time for us to get better and to take advantage of this time and to make it work for us and those around us. Man, listen, I got the three H's. I, I listen, I'm healthy, I'm happy, and I'm honored to serve. And so during this time, I'm just going to serve as many people as I possibly can. Why? Because I can. I go to a predominantly black church, and if we were at church, uh, uh, the organist or the keyboard, it may have pressed on the keys a little bit louder and said, and the congregation may have said amen on that. (laughs) I'll give you an amen. You know, uh, Dane, you usually take us into the thank yous, but I, I've got to say thank you to Joshua. This is awesome to have you on here. This is what we need, right? We need to, to let people know that we're all in this together. Yeah, man. We've got ways around this. We still have people that work at Olivet yep. College that have a true love and yep. passion for what they do and for our students. Um, I cannot thank you enough for the great partner you have been with athletics and student engagement. You have been awesome in ways that, that I'm sure you don't even realize and the people that you bless every day. And I, I'm truly grateful for that. I'm thankful that uh, you, you agreed to come on here and talk to us. I miss seeing you and being around you. This has been um, so in my, my personal faith or my life, I call this cup filling right? yes, sir. cup until it overflows. Come on, man. This has been truly cup filling for me and I appreciate it. Appreciate um, you. I, I love you, Joshua. It's been great to have you on. Um, we couldn't have asked for a better guest. Every guest, listen, every guest is amazing. Why? Because they're sharing their individual perspective and we all have insight. And so it's all good. So whether it's, it's, it's subdued or, 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 or interject, whatever it might be, it's about perspective, baby. We got to have it. And we've had some great ones. And I want to agree with Shockey and Joshua. It's ever since that first handshake, Okay, I just remember going like, wow, this, is, this, this guy's going to make a difference here. And I can tell you from, I work a lot with student athletes from the faculty side, and I'm very close with a lot of the men's basketball team. And just hearing the way they talk about you and other students too, about you and the, what people are doing at the student engagement uh, area in that department. Thank you so much for what you're doing for the students. That hits me right there. Uh, but. Really appreciate you being our guest today. What a show. We're on a roll. We're going to keep them coming. Uh, If you listen to this and enjoyed it, which I don't know how you can't, we need every Monday to just be Joshua Monday. Like, just put a camera in front of them, just go. 
Um, but if you want to listen to more, feel free to go check out the other ones or stay right with us when we get to our next episode. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Pocket Cast, uh, just about anywhere you can find it. Also on the All That College social media and on the All That College YouTube channel. And if you want to be part of the show, it's going to be really hard to live up to this guest today. But if you want to be a part of the show, it's say, hey, all honesty. I don't, I don't blow a lot of smoke around here. Um, but if you want to be a part of the show, have questions you want us to ask, something that you want us to add into the show, then please reach out to me, Dane Pavlovsky, or my co-host Ryan Chalky through email and let us know. I'm D-P-A-V-L-O-S-K-I at allthatcollege.edu. What are you, Shockey? Uh- I am R-S-H-O-C-K-E-Y at olivetcollege.edu. And Joshua, what if somebody wants to get a hold of you? Man, hit me up on TikTok, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jay Gill- I'll do this traditional. Jay Gillespie at olivetcollege.edu. Hit me up, baby. Hit him up. Get in touch. He's ready to talk and he's ready to t- all that good stuff he just told you. He might get you on the whiteboard plan. We'll figure it out. Get those meetings every night. Uh, no. But we, we really appreciate it. So I'll throw a couple of quick thank yous. Joshua, of course, thanks for coming. That was an awesome conversation. Like Shock, you said, cup overflowing right now, I feel like. Positivity. Starting the week off the right way. Um, if you have questions, uh, again, feel free to send them. But I want to thank everybody that has listened. I want to thank marketing for their support and the All That College administration, as always. Uh, but also faculty, staff, their families, and most importantly, our students, Um, Again, talking to somebody who works so much with our students, and I appreciate everything they do and that our students are doing and dealing with. Um, I want to thank the last people I'll thank quick. uh, Aaron Gowdy, Keon, do right, Rainey. Congrats, do right again. Do right, do right, baby. He's my guy. Um, Asher (laughs) Wertheimer, Travis Garner, and Aaron Pavlovsky for the work on that intro. Aaron, not a student, but thanks anyway. Uh, And the outro by another men's basketball alum now. Congrats, Jackson Patton. So thank you to all of those. (laughs) Jay Pat. But those are my thank yous. Shockey, who do you got? Yeah, big thank you to Joshua for joining us on the show today. Uh, Huge thanks for Dane. Dane, we couldn't do it without you. Yes, sir. All the editing that you do for these make us sound good. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, and continue to thank our essential workers that are going. Yes, it. good job, uh, Joshua. You mentioned your wife is a registered nurse. My wife's a registered nurse. A lot of great things happening out there. Yeah. A big thank you to the parents. You know, I know that we're all working through this together, but yeah. we've got kids that we're raising at home, trying to provide some sense of normalcy for them. Yeah. So big thank you to the parents that are stepping up and doing everything that good. they need to do to be a good example. A huge thank you to our senior student athletes mm-hmm. and our yes. seniors, but our senior student athletes, um, a big thank you to them for their commitment for four years. It's very special to be a Comet um, and they've, they've done us right. This is a, one of the best classes we've ever had. Mm-hmm. And so a huge thank you to them. Here we go. A big thank you to people that are starting to get their local businesses back up and running oh, yes. and, and coming out and facing the odds to to just try to make some ends meet. This weekend, the hardware store opened back up. I was able to go get some things. So a huge thank you to them. And uh, we wish them the best and we hope yes. that they can get back on their feet and uh, keep providing those essential services to us. Absolutely. So thank you again, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Ryan. Hopefully this helped bring a little light to your day because, oh, boy, it sure did, especially today. Uh, Keep your eyes peeled, ears open for the next episode. And until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and go Comets. Go Comets! Go Comets! Thanks for listening to Social Distancing. Don't forget to subscribe and be on the lookout for more content.